Click the links to join the channel here on YouTube over at Subscribestar, now over at Odyssey, thanks to the 15 new members over there. I'm freaking loving Odyssey so far. So there's a scene in Old School where um, the cabby turns to the guy behind him, a uh, passenger, <clears throat> and says uh, something like, stop being such a bundle of sticks, which uh, is something that a movie just wouldn't say nowadays, and, the, and, and it's so casually. But the thing is, the movie wasn't endorsing the comment or that you should use that comment. It wasn't saying anything. It was that the character, that was organic to the character. I mean, it, a little bit of an exaggeration, but when somebody, the passenger was being such a pussy that the, the because the seatbelt didn't work or something, that the, the cab driver is just frustrated and you know, says, roughly, stop being such a pussy, he, he said... He said cigarettes, um, really, but you can't say that now, even if it is organic to the character, because because the left wing Twitter kids will just get on social media and pretend to lose their mind and virtue signal and, and say all these kind of Frankfurt School hot words that I don't even know if they understand or. Uh, but um, so what happens is movies and comics and and anything in the mainstream now is so carefully controlled that it's. The worst thing you can do to movies and comics is that they're boring. They're really, really boring. So Batman writer, this pussy, admits problems in the comics industry. Well, no shit. You're partially the one one of the ones who created those problems. So Chip Zdarsky and the Soy Boys who destroyed comics. And to be fair, it's all of mainstream pop culture is going full cultural Bolshevism. Everything has to be a vehicle to push propaganda. Otherwise, it's wasted. Somebody said, what kind of... There's something about a dog whistle for cultural Bolshevism. I was like, How is it a dog whistle? I, I just... That's what they're doing. That's it's not a... Dog whistle is alluding to something else. That's pretty clearly... That's... They're Bolsheviks, and they're, they're doing this Frankfurt School stuff. I, I said it. That's not a dog whistle to anything else. <laughs> Yikes, my guy. Just... Just, yes, I, I'm not. I'm not hiding that. That's what they're doing. That's why this stuff is 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 cancer, because all those ideas are bad ideas that don't withstand withstand the harsh disinfecting sunlight of that open marketplace of ideas. That's why they have to censor, because the left wing has really bad ideas. Anyway, so this is all a problem because the audience is mostly not soy pussies. In fact, if anything. <clears throat> There's a segment of the audience audience that's going even uh, further and further away from these. From, I mean, you have people writing, you know, this kind of stuff. It's like, you think he's going to tell you a fun a fun story? You think he can tell you a story from any other perspective other than his bleeding vagina perspective? No, obviously not. So woke SGWs have been winning the culture war, sort of. It's a pyrrhic victory where they've been spreading their soy cringe message in comics, but to an ever shrinking audience And comics and movies, I think are doing the same thing where the audience is for both of those is shrinking. So what they're doing is just raising ticket price prices for movies. So it's a smaller audience, but they're actually making just as much money. And I think they're doing the same for comics as well, which is, is not good because it's a, both of those things are generational things and like industry saturation and, and market cap type of things. You, you really want a broader audience because it makes you more resistant to um, market fluctuations. Um, so the, um, the point, the short answer is pussies are writing comics and, and anything involved in, in pop culture now. Nobody wants to be lectured to by these soy boys about how much they hate Europeans for some reason, especially Christians and men or any form of right of center ideology. Like they're not, they're not shy about this kind of stuff. Uh, I remember when Zach start, first started talking about this in, I don't know, 2015 when I found the channel and um, he was, he was soft peddling it because it was even worse and it had so many hot words it was difficult to discuss on youtube that's how vehement uh their hate is like they're they're not shy about it. the american chavez is an egregious example but there's uh, the captain america with tana he coats where, where the the bad guys are i i mean i still remember these comics years later because they were so bad where the bad guys in, in every other comic is a is like a a, blonde, a bunch of blonde people in Idaho, you know, the salty the earth people who make a nation um, survive. But in, in I think it was Tommy Hesey Coates his, his worldview. It's like those are the people who are actually the problem, and the blonde haired cap the America needs to go fight him more. And who's that other guy? Uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, like the the bad guy was a white man spelled. You know that was his name. It's just I mean it, it's like childish level of stupidity. And you look at this. 
you look at these guys, it's like, how did you get involved? Oh, it's the soft bigotry of lower expectations. That's the only reason. You didn't get anywhere on merit. They only got there because of they could they could check a box. And I mean, God, he was so bad, I think Mark Wade had to fire him. Anyway, so um this is a comic retailer who did an interview and, and it was gently trying to drop some some honesty and he was he was very careful about it and that was just too much for these these you know twitter idiots activists twi- uh, twitter twitter tw- activists um who aren't who aren't buying a whole lot of product in the first place and i mean the first thing you should do is is just ignore ignore twitter um at completely if you're you know i mean the first thing you do is fire everyone in comics and hey have a move to the right but obviously that'll never happen the thing is every year the sales numbers get smaller because how many stories can you read about blonde motorcycle gangs you think i'm kidding uh, if you don't read comics or or blonde muggers or even um terrorists before you realize that the people who are putting these comics together are completely insane because they know that's not the the, the way that, so um so gang activity, the setting is is roughly America. So gang activity. So what percentage of gangs are these um, blonde and red haired, or these, or sometimes they'll shave the heads, like in Al Ewing's uh, Immortal Hulk. So uh, you got these green and blue eyed motorcycle gangs who are, um, I don't know, running drugs and like robbing liquor stores. So I mean, they exist. They exist for sure, for sure. But what percentage? Can we discuss per capita? <laughs> look at you like uh it's some dangerous territory there buddy so um how this recent thing started is this interview with that comic shop owner talking about how crap the product is which triggered the the, the twitter activists as well how dare he insult a crap product well you know if you want to improve it you're gonna to have to look at it the problem being that the writers editors and company in general because the i don't know the what we call the holding company in this case is is disney or warner brothers for um for DC, uh, have gotten further and uh, further left, but the audience, they've not taken the audience along with them. Audience doesn't want to read propaganda. The retailer was talking about why comic shops have been closing because the store, I mean, I, I, I would, I would, uh, God, if I was a retailer, <laughs> I would have been more honest with them. Um, because the stores are just uh, the stories are just a name only. They're mostly used to push current issues, but only from a toxic left wing point of view. There's no diversity of thought allowed. You wouldn't even be hired in the first place if you were right of center. So the stories are coming from these limousine liberal safe neighborhoods, uh, writers insulated by wealth point of view. They're way out of touch with their audience, who is calling them words I can't even say on YouTube. Which is a shame. There are uh, mainstream comics with gay and trans characters. The customer doesn't want that. It's just an attempt to brainwash kids into sodomy. And then there's just too much diversity in feminism, which most people feel is cringe. Most people don't value far left wing, BLT, feminist, diverse, whatever is topical for the moment. Those are soy boy pussy values. That's why manga sells, because they're selling what the audience wants. Dear Marvel Comics, why don't you just do what manga does? Can you write organic stories? Stop with the diversity? There shouldn't be any gay or trans characters in the story because there's no way a soy boy can write it without it being cringy propaganda. And even if they could, it's like, well, why is it in there? Most Your audience doesn't want it. Oh, if the audience doesn't want it, then don't put it in there. It's just, just that easy. Same, uh, same with writing diversity. It's all Stephen King levels of bad. If you've ever read the Dark Tower series where he tries to write a uh, pox walks woman, it was horrible. So um, it would be better to kill the diversity because in this current Bolshevik climate, the only bad people can be blonde-haired, you know, blue-eyed, out of Aryan central casting. So there is no, or uh, there's no willing suspension of disbelief when you have characters like that. But it's, it's like everything is a, oh gee, it's a. A blonde guy in a trucker cap and a, you know, a tank top and a, I don't know, maybe a red MAGA cap or something that makes you look like a red MAGA cap or some Norse symbology and, oh, he's being a bigoted istophobe and he's running around. Maybe he's going to gay bash people. It's like, oh, yeah, that's not the, um, that's not the group of people that that commits those kind of assaults and batteries. What are you saying, bigot? Yeah, the the truth is, is bigoted. Marvel would look at manga and say, yeah, let's do this, but no, no, no. People don't want you to race race swap and make things gay, woke, feminist, and lame. At least start making some stories from a nationalist perspective. 
The only stories they feel safe writing from a tribal perspective are black, Asian, Latin, Arab, or whatever, but never from a European perspective. Or the, you know, the European uh, groups within that. Why exactly is it okay for these non-Euro groups, but not for the Euro groups? Most people around the world think diversity is cancer. And it is. It's only these American soy boys and cat ladies who love writing about it. Except they're living in Santa Monica, Santa Barbara, um, Marin or Napa in, you know, $3 million houses. And, um, and their perspective is just not, it's just so far out of whack. They're living in these very insulated communities. And, and people are tired of the big gay agenda. They always whine about comics reflecting the world around them. Which is absolute horseshit. It only frames far left-wing anti-white themes as a positive, and any right-wing theme is going to be a negative. Uh, you end up seeing stuff like, okay, say less than, probably less than one tenth of one percent of global terrorism is going to be by blonde-haired, blue-eyed people, but in comics, it's going to be like ninety percent. I I I read a comic once. I don't know which one it was, but there's a scene. They're at an airport. And the two dudes are in ski masks, and they're um, they're doing that where they're trying to take an airplane and you know make it land somewhere else type of stuff. Used to be big themes in the seventies. And um, I'm peeking out from under the ski caps so that you know the the comic writer and the com- Marvel is not istophobic. You see blonde hair peeking out. You're like that's you know the that that's the statistical improbability comes up every single time. It, it's like you're showing us the one in a million chance. Every single comic is these, oh, hey, look, another blonde home invader. Or the burglary ad with the, the blonde guy with the crowbar. That's developmentally disabled. But that's all the mainstream, that's how absurd it is. Hey, another uh, another march with Superman holding some sign about sodomy and global warming and how much the writers hate Christianity and how they're angry at their dad. It's all just all that kind of uh, developmentally disabled cringe. It's a little weird that they never go after any other religion or group other than, than us, the beautiful people of the light, which is ridiculous because we know how awesome we are. Can we get some comics from a different perspective? I mean, obviously not, which is fine, because the the faster they kill the comics, the better. Kids shouldn't be reading this Frankfurt School propaganda anyway. If they're going to read comics, they're going to stick with manga or, you know, Comicsgate or Vox Day's Got Comics or all these other kind of alternative stuff. Because the Japanese don't hate the fierce characters, but the American comics do. Hey, Marvel, can you make comics with the... um, the pox walks, whatever's as the gangs, the home invaders, the rioters, the carjackers, and all the rest. Can you make them as anything other than Mary Sue's? No, it's impossible. So literally, you can judge the characters by the darkness of the ink they use on the paper. The, the darker is going to be better, or, or the eye color in the hair. It is it, the correlation is like 99%. It's just that easy. And if you got these people in a moment of, uh, you know, private, and, and they'd be like, yeah, what do you, I mean, we just can't, we just can't do anything else. We're, we're painting ourselves in this corner where these, the comp, it's, it's not just the Twitter kids are pressuring them. The, the, the writers and the people who are doing this stuff, they are far left wing nut jobs. But even they would probably be more um, balanced if they had an opportunity, if they would be free of just being immediately fired. But um, it's the the companies that own the Marvel and DC itself and Image and Dark Horse and all the rest. They they are um, they are very toxic, far left, anti white, anti Christian, misandrist companies. It's, especially with Marvel because the holding company or the parent company is is Disney, and <clears throat> you can look at what Disney's doing. It's like Disney is absolutely insane. So um, that's how formulaic comics are, where you can literally look at hair color or eye color and say, oh, I know who the good guys and bad guys are just based on eye color. And it's like the correlation is, it's, you know, it's like a scatter plot on a line, but it's like it just looks like one slightly fuzzy line on top of a straight line because that's how tight the correlation is. It really is that bad. And, and for storytelling, that's not a way to tell a story because people need a little mystery. It's like, oh, hey, the the black guy is going to come along and save the day again. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, every single time. It's, oh, that's, and the blonde guy is going to be like a plot to, you know, take down a building or something. Oh, that's weird. 
yeah, yeah. It's like some kind of ger- uh, some kind of like German club in Idaho, and and they're militias and and Trump supporters and and Jordan Peterson, who's that, some Canadian guy who's his whole thing is he's, he's pro free speech or something or against compelled speech. Yeah, yeah. That guy's the, the worst, the most dangerous thing in America right now is is people who are uh, pro free speech. You know, looking at these people, and like, yeah, I hope your industry just crashes and burns. Anyway, um, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys all next episode. Yeah. <laughs>